Hello everybody. My name is Luigi Carlo and I am a painter and illustrator. Today we will be talking about different aspects of Mona Lisa, which is probably the most popular painting in the world. Mona Lisa was painted oil on panel and the size is 77 by 53 cm. The sitta is Lisa Gherardini, wife of an Italian merchant, Francesco del Giocondo. The portrait was completed over at least eight years, but the exact length of time is not certain. This process of gradual completion will explain the multiplicity of elements that appear in the portrait. Let's now talk a little bit about the pose of Mona Lisa. The subject is sitting on a armchair. The position of her hands is soft and delicate, with an elegant, slight perceptible torsion of the bust. The position of the head seems to suggest a turning point, and her face is suspended at the point of reaching the frontal position. She sits in front of a rock landscape, which complements her frame. In the landscape is well depicted the atmospheric perspective. This means that objects appear more bluish and with less contrast as they recede far back in the landscape. This is because there is more air between the observer, that's you, and the object you are observing. The sitta is well connected with the geological study seen in the background. Above all, the great artist and scientist is able to express in an excellent painterly manner the profound analogy of the microcosm of the human body and the microcosm of Earth and the flow of life that pervades both. This concept is also supported by the elaborate writings of the artist. As the blood flows in the human body via arteries and veins, so does the water of the river, visible in the background. Vasari, another great Italian artist, and he also was the first art historian, said, he who looks at her intently can see the beating of her pulse. Let's now talk a little bit about the technique that Leonard used to paint Mona Lisa. This artwork becomes a cumulative picture in which meaning and knowledge are suspended in layers. Analogous to the technique used by the artist. Indeed, in order to create the sense of depth in the painting, Leonardo applied a number of layers of paint, using also its finger, as recent study showed fingerprint of Leonardo on the painting. These progressive layers of velature, from the Italian word for veil, consist of a number of glazes painted over the underpainting. This is Leonardo famous sfumato, from the Italian word for smoky effect to give a fine and progressive changing in the gradation of tones or color from light to dark that is barely perceptible. Also, the brush strokes are invisible, which creates the effect of modulation and color sensitive to light, conferring an atmospheric and impalpable quality to the painting elements, including flesh tones, drapery, and the landscape. Let's talk now a little bit the light. As you know, the light is also a very important element within painting. Leonardo da Vinci was a pioneer in the study of light, and he is credited with the various insights about its nature. The light in the portrait was also manipulated by Leonardo in order to enhance the pictorial effect. The subject is sitting close to a balcony. I have put the red 
bar to indicate the edge, so the light should come from behind. Instead, in the painting, the light is coming from top right. You can see the white bar that indicates it, as this creates optimal effect for light and shadow. Furthermore, the forearms, especially the left forearm, I put a blue bar to indicate it, should possibly be more in shadow. Nonetheless, the fabulous drapery of the forearms is clear visible and shimmering. This highlights the mastery of Leonardo to arrange the element of the composition optimally. Let's talk now about the face, which is the focal point of all portraits. The subtle and delicate smile of Mona Lisa is legendary. Indeed, it is a pleasing facial expression. Observing the face of Mona Lisa, there is the effect of movement of light and shade around the mouth, giving rise to a slight smile, which is rather elusive. One moment she appeared to be smiling, and the next not smiling. This aspect has been focused on particularly and given recognition, probably has played a dominant role in elevating the portrait's reputation to being the most famous in history. Leonardo intended to give Mona Lisa a natural look, and the excellent shading, particularly in the face and hands, is employed to create an utterly convincing impression of plasticity. The position of the eyes and lips, along with the position of the horizon, that is a different level on the right and left side of the head, is there to produce an effect that seemingly Mona Lisa change expression, position of the head and gaze, depending on the observer position. In other words, depend from which position you're looking at Mona Lisa. Leonardo did in fact use a model, but was not painting the model. It is generally understood that the artist used a model whether or not the specific model is the subject of the artwork. Also, the landscape is believed to depict Sumerian Tuscany. However, the elements are rearranged to produce the exquisite effect sought by Leonardo. In conclusion, the portrait of Mona Lisa is the result of excellent painting skills combined with the scientific knowledge of the human anatomy, optics, light and geology. The great master of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci, employed these skills and knowledge to produce an artwork with the highest and most exquisite pictorial qualities. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Luigi Carlo and I am a painter and illustrator. You can email me at art.luigicarlo at yahoo.co.uk to tell me about your views. Also, you can visit my website, that's luigicarlo.cabomade.com to see my painting portrait, including an other category as well. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.